Yeah, welcome to the Daily Exchange. We're back. Decentralized finance, or DeFi for short, is quickly becoming the hottest thing in cryptocurrency right now. To some people, it's the best expression of what cryptocurrency can do and the potential of the technology. We're talking all about it today. The whole idea of DeFi is basically to break down finance into its constituent pieces and rebuild it all on the internet as an open, permissionless system. Now the reason you'd, be, you'd do this is because the financial services produced by DeFi are theoretically much more competitive and efficient and flexible than anything you can build in the traditional financial system. Let's take Bitcoin. For example, it got all this started more than 10 years ago by taking the financial service of creating money and putting it on the internet where anyone could start doing it. It's incredible. Now, printing money used to be strictly the domain of central banks, but suddenly it was something that anyone, in theory at least, could start doing online. Some people did, and so Bitcoin opened the doors to let anyone try to create a new currency, ideally something that would be superior to the currencies of today. But when people talk about DeFi these days, they're mostly talking about all the other kinds of financial services like loans, insurance, and so on, that are getting broken out of their silos, put online for the whole world to use, and most importantly, being linked up to each other so that all these different DeFi applications can start to get interconnected, turning this internet of different financial applications into an entire DeFi ecosystem. Now, this interconnectedness makes a huge difference. If we look at a chart of Ethereum DeFi users over time, we see that it's been ticking along for years, but it's only in 2020 that it's really hit that hockey stick shaped curve of exponential growth. Now that could be largely because 2020 is the first year that these DeFi apps have gotten sufficiently numerous and interconnected enough to interface with each other. But what makes DeFi applications such a big deal? Let's look at a DeFi loan versus a traditional loan as an example. In traditional finance, you go to a bank or a money lender to get a loan. They check your credit score, your ID, your collateral, and so on. You agree to the terms and sign a contract and you get a loan at whatever rate the lender decides to charge. The lender also has to cover the costs of all the borrowers who default on their loans by raising costs for everyone. The lender then pockets all the profit remaining after all of this. Now the plus side is the people can get loans. The downsides are it's slow, expensive and risky for both the borrower and the lender. Now let's look at a typical crypto powered loan. Here, a prospective borrower just needs to have some crypto as I guess collateral. They go to a DeFi lending app, deposit their crypto into this app's smart contract, and can then mint themselves a stablecoin loan based on their amount of collateral. In other words, they get a stablecoin by staking some collateral. If the price of their collateral falls, it can be automatically liquidated to guarantee the loan, which helps guarantee that lenders will always make their money back. So it's less risk. They don't need to spend any overhead on credit checks or repos and can instead just strictly focus on providing money to borrowers. The best part is anyone can be a lender or a borrower and the app can even automatically set rates based on the ratio of lenders to borrowers at the time. It's not a business per se, but it's still an online application, I guess, and that provides services and, and I guess it earns a profit and you can earn a profit from it as well. For more details on how to exactly use these crypto loans, you can check out the Find a Crypto Lending page, which goes into more detail, numbers, interest rates, and things like that. Go and check it out. And rather than all profits, I guess, going to the lender, they can be distributed back to users in various ways, manifesting as higher returns for borrowers or lower fees for lenders and various other rebates or extra incentives. 
The end result, in theory, is a fully automated lending system with no paperwork, no credit checks, and no debt collectors, where anyone can go to instantly get extra funds and earn interest by becoming a lender or a borrower. In other words, it's a DeFi app or a DAP, an autonomous online financial service which can stand alone or plug into other DeFi apps. A DeFi trading platform, for example, could integrate this lender into itself to help provide a margin trading service, as an example. And like that, the dApps start connecting and becoming greater than the sum of their parts. Lending dApps are a popular part of the DeFi ecosystem right now, but you can also find automated market makers, insurance, collectives, crypto investment platforms, and many more. It's worth noting that dApps don't have to be restricted to the ideas of traditional financial services. While most functional dApps do have real world equivalents such as centralized lenders or exchanges, others are more like monetary experiments. Cryptocurrencies such as Ampleforth and its many, many imitations are trying to create entirely new financial primitives while Platforms like Synthetics and Universal Market Access are exploring the possibilities of synthetic assets and how to safely create tokens whose prices can follow anything like shares, whatever have you. And similar to the lending dApps, all these others can also experiment with various profit sharing arrangements to try to create the most competitive dApp possible. Today, it's normal for some dApps to be centrally controlled while others are created and governed by communities of users, I guess of varying degrees, but all of them are linking up and carrying out their own financial experiments in their own ways. Although it's still early days, we can already get a quite a clear picture, I guess, of the advantages of DeFi relative to traditional finance. So first of all, it's potentially more secure somewhere down the line, letting parts of the global financial system migrate from generally being more centralized around banks to being more distributed. By pulling financial services out of bank silos and putting them online, we can move towards a system with more redundancies, more alternatives, more flexibility and fewer points of failure. As we saw in 2007 and have a good chance of seeing this, I guess, in a year or Next year, it's quite possible that banks and even central banks can fail and become weak points in the financial system. It also lets anyone anywhere in the world start developing and using financial service dApps. While this obviously created, you know, to create an extremely innovative and competitive scene in the DeFi space, which is incredible. In the real world, banks tend to monopolize financial service developments to the fullest extent permissible by their country's laws. And fintechs have to essentially ask banks for permissions before doing anything to adventurous. What's more, different banks will often use different systems to say nothing of all the different standards and currencies in different countries. The resulting financial system moves at a glacial pace. It is inherently riddled with inefficiencies and is nowhere near as competitive as it could be. But in DeFi, anyone can start creating and providing financial services to anyone. Sure, many of these are just scams or you know experiments, but many aren't. And among the ones that aren't, we've already seen a, quite an ultra competitiveness play out. Countless new dApps are emerging and competing for market share and money is extremely quick to shift between them. It's incredible. Moving partly as a consequence of the whole frictionless, cheap, fast, I guess, payments side of crypto. So it's all based on this fundamental. With composability, interoperability, and open sourcing being the norm, it's very easy for dApps to emerge and start connecting with others and for money to quickly shift between them. You know, the stablecoin platform, I think that's been an incredible Cambrian explosion. Developments that would take months or years in traditional finance can happen within days in DeFi. The recent SushiSwap dApp, for example, was created and achieved over a billion dollars in value locked in about 48 hours. It's also worth considering the benefits of community ownership and the ability to redirect profits by communities. By virtue of the automation potential of blockchain and programmable digital currency, dApps can provide services within minimal cost to distribute significant profits back to other users. After all, 
The fees you pay in traditional financial services have to cover the cost of the bank's executive bonuses, office rental, employee health insurance, and so on. DApps don't need any of that. Just a token economy that could be as fat or as lean as a developer thinks it should be. When people talk about the internet eating finance or DeFi eating finance, they're referring to these kinds of benefits and how traditional financial services will have to evolve to remain competitive. Although it's early days, what we've seen from DeFi already makes it quite clear that change is coming and it's coming real fast with this. So in conclusion, this DeFi thing is coming. It's booming. It's going to be great. It's decentralizing finance. Check it out. That's a daily exchange. DeFi edition. Yeah.